So yeah, hi, I'm Tonis. Uh, I'm a JavaScript developer from Tallinn, Estonia. So like, like they just said, uh, last year I made this JavaScript game framework called Lime.js. But I'm not going to talk about that today because I'm going to talk about dev tools for front-end developers instead and this tool that I created to ease this process. So let's start from the basics. Uh, what do you use for writing code? Well, most of you probably use something that is uh, wicked fast and very powerful. And others prefer things that don't make your eyes hurt so much. And some of you make code on the cloud. That's all great, of course, but there's another tool that every one of you uses. And that's, of course, DevTools and Firebug. And I do mean that you use them for developing, not only for debugging. Like you see where the styles are coming from, you test out your new ideas and see how they get applied. But when you've done all this, then you probably go back to your editor and repeat what you have just learned. So this problem of constant repeating really annoyed me. And there are some solutions for it, but usually they are just too specific. Like the best part of dev tools is that they don't force you to use a special setup or use a specific style. So I thought maybe I could use Node to give a solution for it. And this is what I did. Uh, the resolution is so small. That's Okay, so you have your web page somewhere in the server and some source files that you serve in the hard drive and you serve them out to your clients. Now let's add this application into the picture. It's a node process so you can grant it access to your files and obviously it's a node so it's also a server so it can also connect to your clients and so you can have access to your source files that you can manage while having the real-time debug information at the same time. So let's see if it really does something. Uh, so Styler comes with a bunch of demo sites, but rather than using those, I thought I'd uh, use something from the real life and something that you've already seen. So here's a uh, web page of LXJS running on my local machine. And I want to change it using Styler that I have running here. So I need to connect it to. And to make this connection, there are a couple of options. Um, for first, you could add this small JavaScript into your page or use a bookmarklet or there are some exchanges that they essentially just uh, automatically load the same JavaScript. So I already have the extension, so I'm just going to close this one. And on, on this page, I'm going to click on extension and select start using Styler. Now, this is the first time I'm using Styler in this uh, page. So it's going to prompt me to make a new project for it. So I'm going to quickly fill it in. This this URL is just defines uh, what pages are part of the project. Source locations are more interesting. Essentially, these are the mappings between the URLs your page is using and the uh, source locations, source files, source folders on your hard drive. So it has already found where the CSS is coming from. So I'm just going to find a matching folder from my hard drive. Like JS, static, and assets, and CSS. Seems that everything worked out fine because it's green. I uh, don't need this Google font thing. I'm going to click Save, and we're done. Finally, we're in the main view of Styler. This is where the fun happens and where the work gets done. I'm going to try to fit it in the small screen. It's obviously designed for a larger setup. So let's see what's interesting in here. In this 
bottom left area, you can see the whole DOM tree of your page. So this is, these are the elements that this page is containing. Like in DevTools, you can see all the style rules that apply to a selected element right there. And of course, you can also inspect an element from a page to see the style rules that apply to it. Now on this uh, right area, you can see all the files that this page is using for this project. And if you click on it, it opens up in this nice editor. So, but you can of course also just click on a style rule or a property, and then it will find where the, this rule is defined or this property and open it up from the right location. Now let's try to change the file. I'm gonna make a change to this file, press Command S, and you will see that uh, the that, uh, changes instantly appeared. Now, the page did not refresh, just the style rules were swapped out. Now if you don't have this command S in your muscle memory, you can switch on live mode in here, and then as I make changes, you will see the, the page updating. And now the thing to realize in here is that once I press command S, the actual file in the hard drive gets saved. So there is no step for exporting anything out, and I can go to this page, I can reload it, or, or go to another page, and all my st changes are still there. I can open up the same page in another browser, for example. See all the changes there as well. Now when I open up this Firefox window, it's also appeared here in this client selection list. So I can uh, switch to Firefox and work on Firefox elements, or switch back to Chrome and work on Chrome's elements. And when I make a change, then both of them get updated. This is even more important when you are doing mobile development, for example then you can just point your iOS or Android device to the same URL. It will the same way appear in this list as an iPad or Android device, and you can have live preview while developing. And this, of course, also works with your native browser. So if you open up the same file in, for example, TextMate, Let's find what was the some navigation block. Okay, here was the same code that I just changed. I save it in TextMate, Styler picks it up, and uh, automatically reloads the styles. Uh. So, these are the updates. But maybe you can use something else to make it even more interesting, because we have this real data in here. So, oh, sorry. so here is our old DOM tree. So when I start to add a new rule, then it can autocomplete me based on the elements this page is uh, that uh, appear in this page. So if I, for example, select this container block, I can see all the class names that are inside container block and make, make our typing much efficient. Uh, another part is uh, about the file system. Let's see if I can sort of that. So here's a Twitter image, for example, Twitter icon. I'm gonna find where it's defined. So this is the rule that defines this Twitter image. This is the image. I'm gonna remove this rule and try to rewrite it. So it's a background, right? Uh, Prompts me that I probably want URL next, that's correct. Now, obviously I don't remember the, the name of the image, I just saw it once. So I'm just gonna uh, start typing the path and it can autocomplete me based on the folder structure this page was using. And again, this doesn't need any special setup, it's just using the same mapping that was defined for as the CSS files. So these are all the images that are on this page, uh, Crockford there, and, 
and uh, this was the social image, social icons, PNG, background PNG, and we're done, the image is back there. Thanks. So let's go back to slides. So as you just saw, the node allows us to seamlessly go connect these clients and exchange information between them to make our, sort of our editor process more effective. But that, of course, will be worthless if uh, the editor part of the application will be itself uh, performing poorly or lacking some useful features. But luckily, there are, are, of course, already great editor components out there, like Code Mirror and Ace, and we choose Ace. And from this project, we can get things like uh, undo, redo, copy, paste, this kind of stuff. And on top of that, we can add this really specific uh, functionality that only makes sense on style sheets or, or maybe even isn't possible when you don't have this real-time inf information from the client side. The other problem, of course, is that who uses CSS anymore? Um, shouldn't we all use th things like SAS, Less, and Stylus? Up to you, of course, but for me, using stylus makes a lot of sense. So if you go back to this picture and add support for preprocessed languages. Now you, in your hard drive, you have your stylus file. It goes through the application, it's then compiled, and the client already gets the compiled version. And the best part is that uh, you don't have to do any setup for this. You don't even need to have stylus installed on your machine because it's bundled in. So. Let's take a quick look of that as well. Mm. Let's close that. Okay, here I have a new NPM website. And let's take a quick look of the source as well. Oh, I don't have internet, so let's keep that. And I'm going to open up it. it it up in the styler, and you can see that this page has, has a stylus file inside the stylus dir directory and some CSS uh, frameworks under the static folder. There's also a Neb extension library here that is also bundled in, so you don't have to download it. So let's open it up. You can see that it's a stylus file. If I make a change, it behaves the same as it did before. Now, when I make a really bad mistake in here, I get a nice parser right here in the in the editor, so I can find the line and and go and fix it. So, how am I doing on time? Uh, I guess I don't have time to for a longer demo, but I'm I'm gonna give you a glimpse of some other features so you can maybe explore them out for yourself later. So for example, from here you can add, uh, add and put your element in a, into an interactive state. For example, I might put this download to a hover state and then I can go and change the hover uh, styles visually while seeing how they look like without going, without the need for for uh, activating it with my mouse myself. Here you can uh, put your page on a print style sheet mode. Um, some other cool stuff like, uh, like you can uh, drag on this all the numeric values so you can find visually find the right position and then later find out that the magic number was 12 pixels and some UI features, like, like maybe some, someone likes to work in a single window. So, so before I finish, I wanted to give a quick shout out to two and other good projects. Chrome DevTools are in rapid development. They're adding great features uh, every month, I believe. And uh, they already support things like saving out your uh, whole changes as a single slide sheet. Brackets is another 
cool application developed by Adobe that has quite similar goals, but uh, they are using uh, Chrome Remote Debugging API to make this client side connection. But for Styler, I just made it public. You can all install it from NPM. Yeah. Sources, of course, also on GitHub. Okay, that's the right path. And uh, so try it out, give feedback, and when you try it out, you can also think about that it's probably made uh, with the same skill set that you have. So maybe you can even add some features or, or fix some bugs. sec, I'm going to fix the weird layout issue and really. Good thing I have the editor on the hand. Okay, here you can see it. So thanks. a browser developer who does server side who does client side client side <laughs> oh okay so you guys are pretty excited about this section of LXJS uh, the next person coming up is Karen she works at 